This episode is brought to you by Crow's Craft Brewing Company. Crow's Craft, the nonconformist. Consumption of alcoholic beverage impairs your ability to drive a car or operate machinery and may cause detrimental health problems. Drink responsibly. I love it. No, no, but think about it. So you have a 35-minute relationship with that cigar and you want it to be beautiful from the beginning to the end, right? But compared to cigarettes, cigarettes is a flame. That's yeah. a real cigar. Cigar is a relationship. It's a relationship, <laughs> right? <laughs> Deva, uh, of course. Uh, but of course, if you have a cigar like this, <laughs> then that's already something different. <laughs> <laughs> Can you Hello. hear? Hey. Now, yeah. I got there you. Finally got you, Perry. Good thing, yeah. Okay, wait. I'm having technical difficulties, Perry. Oh, okay, lang okay, lang okay, lang okay. You have a drink close by? Good. I got my special sauce, Perry. Woo-hoo. You like my props, Pat, eh? I, I love it, dude. It's perfect. It's yeah. perfect. Oh, yeah. It's perfect, dude. But I'm actually in my walking closet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big walk-in closet, dude. Right? So, yeah. My wife doesn't know, so. <laughs> it's okay. What the dude? Wait, I want to maximize the screen. Man. You know what, man? If there's oh. something I gotta tell you that I don't see you as often as before, right? I know, but I dude, know. Every time I fucking see you, you have a new do, man. Your hairdo changes, but I like the weather, pal. I had no, cause I had to have the COVID cut, pal. <laughs> Because this, what, what's the COVID cut? Okay, I mean, I have. It's it's basically it's basically like you have a lot of bull bull hanging from your the ends of your hair, right? It's really kinky and really like stringy and like white. You know, you have that really bad white one that's just sticking out. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So so my wife had to just kind of make me fall. Trim, again. trim, trim. <laughs> <laughs> just trim it. No, I think I know what it is, eh? Because uh, when you when you put the brothers side by side, pare, yeah. you're the only one with the real. <laughs> I'm the only one who has hair. <laughs> the lion mane, pare. <laughs> <laughs> La, pare. The others are holding on to the very roots. <laughs> Dude, my my brother Jonas has already given up, man. He's already. Lana, I see, like this. But yeah. But then his barbas is like, it, parang it transferred everything. It's, it's, not, it's, it's geography, not yeah, quantity. Gravity. <laughs> Just gravity has pulled it down. It's like your yak balls. You know, I had a story about this cigar guy. No, no. Oh. So, we, so, so years ago, right, we're, um, so we, we, we export uh, a lot to the U.S., right? And oh. this company that we were working for. Wait, before you begin, oh. because oh. this is going to be a long story, we have yeah. to tell you. This is number five, guys. Number, number five. five. Episode number five. Okay, this is Crow Stock, number five. And we've got Roman Ripoll, okay? Thank you. In the house. And we're going to be talking a lot about the cigar <laughs> business, COVID. Monkey business. Bull bull. Monkey business. <laughs> <laughs> Air, pal. Name it, man. So, yeah. So, let's, let's start. Uh, okay, so first of all, I want to say thanks, man, for having me on. And I really appreciate uh, giving me the time to chit chat. I haven't seen you in oh, a really man. long time. And exactly. I think it's going to be an interesting, fun <laughs> event. Let's see. No. And I haven't even, I haven't even poured my drink yet. Para <laughs> nagsimula na ako, man. Actually, I'll join you. Might as well. Yeah, but see, I'm, I'm on, I'm on, no. It's a. Uh, uh, covert, but uh, covert, Mona. Covert, okay. <laughs> but yeah. So, anyway, so I'm on this. I'm on this. Um, I'm on this. This trip, right? So they fly us out on a private jet from Florida, from Tampa, Florida, to Cancun, Mexico, right? Oh. As he's speaking about gravity, right? 
Oh. And this Dominican, this guy from the Dominican Republic, his name's Hochi Blanco. He's the biggest cigar producer in the Dominican. Well, one of the biggest cigar producers in the Dominican, a really good friend of ours. And then he, he asks our host, he goes, hey, Joe, because they're about, at that time, they were about in late 40s. And this was about 10, 15 years ago, right? So it's quite, quite some time ago. He goes, hey, Joe, to our friend, don't you remember when we were 20? Our dicks were really long and our balls <laughs> were really tight. And then now that we're almost 50, our balls are really long and our dicks are really short. <laughs> the gravity just pulled it down. <laughs> Plus the pelo. Plus the pelo. <laughs> I mean. Oh, it's, Roman. It's Roman. Yeah. Okay. I got to ask you, man. Go. Cigars, dude. Yes. Cigars. Yes. How many years ago is it? I mean, how, how did this all happen in the family? Okay. Well, my dad, my dad's, my dad was in the cigar business. He started with the Spanish tobacco monopoly uh, right. right around the 60s, mid 60s. Wow, around there that long yeah. ago yeah yeah so he, yeah. he started off and then eventually he became the general manager of the company and yeah. then in 91 he took his early retirement whatever money he got to scrape up put Whoa. it into our business in 93 started out we started off with five employees in 93 in an old house along taft avenue uh wow. it, near la salle yeah yeah we rented an old house and uh Happy to say, uh, now we're uh, about 450 employees. Wow. wow. Yeah, so we've grown a bit. From, and, from and, and when you talk about, I mean, he know uh, from the very beginning to, to now, what's yeah. happening in the world today. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, you know, it's been a crazy ride. It because you're, you're not in a business of selling milk or yeah. sugar. Dude, cigars are, it's like, really fine it's the market yeah. and, and you know you're balancing between excise taxes legalities and all yeah. this crap dude it's like walking a minefield absolutely in fact in fact we're always under attack every every step of the way every year is just getting more and more difficult but i believe because we started off in, uh, so long ago and my dad had that experience getting into it Right. And got a, we had a lot of friends over the years in, in the U.S. and different countries. It gave us the tools to be able to survive. Because realistically, the cigar business, it's like survival of the fittest in a lot of ways. You mm -hmm. know, because get, from the very beginning, from the very beginning, pare, it's like, it was like heaven. It was like fiesta, you know, like in the 90s. Right. Right. Man, it was, I remember when we were making cigars for the U.S., buddy, we were making over 50 different brands. What? Yeah, man. It was crazy because there was a huge cigar boom in the 90s. I'm sure you remember. Like, everybody was, was smoking cigars. Even here in the Philippines, you had a lot of cigar bars. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we had a lot of that. But then, um, you know, as the years go on, you know, people start, you know, they, they lose interest. They change interest and all that. But then you still have the core people that really stuck to it right and even back then when we were making brands for so many people those 50 turned to be like five you know yeah but what what year did your dad start tabakaria 93 1993 okay. so in 93 here's my question did yeah. hollywood have a lot to do with it was it like the the in thing to have a cigar was it Arnold? Was it who are the you know all the famous you know actors yeah. out there that yeah. really use uh, you know yeah. smoke a lot of cigars? Well, well, when we started, when we started, it was um, just pretty quiet. You know, I mean, it was really the beginning of things. When it hit ninety six, ninety seven, exactly what you said, Arnold Schwarzenegger oh. in the movies, where that you have Sylvester Stallone, and women, a lot of women also, you With know, smoking, yeah, smoking. And um, one of the big, one of the big uh, contributors to that was a magazine called Cigar Aficionado. And so that, did that come out in the 90s or it's an old magazine it, that just, you know? You know, I'm, I'm, I can't really say exactly when they started, but they were very influential in the 90s. Until okay. today, they're still around. But okay. they were like the Bible for anybody who wanted to know about cigars, like Dominican cigars, Cuban cigars. 
you know, uh, Nicaraguan, Honduran, Philippine. There's so many different. So many kinds. And that's why, why is it that we just keep hearing of Cohiba and yeah. Cuban cigars? Is it because of the U.S.? Okay, my, my personal theory is that here, okay, I, I can safely say in the Philippines, the Philippines follows pretty much what the U.S. does. And it's, yeah. a, it's always been kind of that way. That way. Yeah, yeah right? The rest same of the for world, beer, man. I think same, same for beer. Well, yeah. yeah, because yeah, they're very good in marketing. And they're, you know. One of the things was after the after, um, after Cuban embargo in, in, in America, they couldn't get Cuban cigars anymore. Made it more precious. <laughs> it was de demand. <laughs> supply and demand. <laughs> now, because you couldn't get supply, I'm going to say that that's probably one of the reasons also that all the other countries started exploding. Like okay. Dominican Republic, they're the biggest producer now for the U.S. It's a monster. The, the, the U.S. market alone is 350 million cigars a year. I can't believe that. It's just yeah. for me, it's mind boggling, right? Because it's, I mean, I would think cigarettes, right? Because cigarettes, oh yeah. you got, it's a short, it's a short burn. Yeah. And yeah. then you go. But yeah. a cigar, dude, a cigar, how long does it take you to smoke a freaking cigar? Yeah, man? well, you know, that's the thing. I mean, it really depends. Like this cigar here, this is a Robusto, okay? So that's okay. a five inch. When, you, five when inch you say cigar. Robusto, is it the kind of tobacco or the size? It's the size. So, so okay. you, have, you have generic sizes for all the cigars. You have Robusto, Corona, <laughs> Corona's Larga. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I gotta talk. So Corona is a freaking size. It's a it's crown, Corona. Yeah, but it's a size. It's a size. I mean, it's a cigar so size. I'm sure the sales of Corona cigars have been dropping. You know, <laughs> dude, do you know about that, right? I mean, the sales of Cor well, I gotta say it, but it's the truth. Corona yeah. beer sales uh -huh. have have gone down. John Joe, am I right? It came out in the internet. In the in the US, but in the Philippines, where we're all mahilig sa kalokohan, yeah. Corona is actually going up. Because oh, people wow. want to be drinking, want, they want to be seen drinking Corona because it's funny. Yeah. It's ironic. Yeah. 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 It's just like, you know, when we, we had the health warnings, if, uh, they changed it. But I used to, we used to have, because like all the, all the tobacco products now, they have like these weird health yeah. warnings. Yeah, yes, exactly. But Did there was. You, I mean, you, do you have to do that mandatory? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there was one that came out. It was a hand with a yaw seed. That was like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it was it, a limp. It was a limp, was a limp ash. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, a limp potato. Guess yeah. what? That was the highest selling health warning yeah. label yeah. in oh the country. <laughs> it's, the least, it's the least gross to look at. It's really, really. Oh no, man, I'd it, love to see that. Is it like? I'm sure it's in Google somewhere, man. Yeah, yeah. We, we um, we, 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 we still have some of the old ones, but we have to change the regu the regulation changes, and you know, it always shifts. And do you they know. send that to you? I mean, you just put it in and print it out. I mean, no, you have to. Or, we print it out and then we, yeah. we apply it to the to the packaging, you know. But like like for example, some of the some of the items that we sell because we don't just sell cigars. We also import different products from different partners around the world. Like right. one of the brands that we carry is McBaron. It's a pipe tobacco. It's a roll your own tobacco. So it's roll, nice. your, own, roll your own cigarettes, basically. So we nice. Yeah. So they, oh, there. Right, there you go. <laughs> well, there it is. Nice. There it is. <laughs> and, and that, that's the one that, that freaking, wow. I never saw that. About but it because wow. it's it's funny, man. I never saw that. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, wow, but that's yeah. hilarious. That's definitely hilarious. Yeah. Man. So so yeah, but it's been it's been really a it's been a roller coaster ride through the years, you know, with the yeah. cigar industry. Uh, but like I said, um, over the years we've been lucky to make a lot of good partners and a lot of good friends. So we. But I mean, you guys in the in this country, Mane Philippines, you're yeah. only two, right? Yeah. There are only two players. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Here's the question. But yeah. Tobacco. I mean, yeah. I saw in your website, it all starts with the seeds. Of course. Right? Of course. Okay. So what is the tobacco capital of the Philippines? Oh, there's Where? two places. There's two okay. places. Oh, the first one is in Isabela province, really. Okay. And in La Union. Those are and the is two. there a reason? Is it 
I mean, is there a reason? What is it that that that, that elevation, humidity, heat? What what affects tobacco? Well, okay, you have to get the right kind of humidity. It's got to have the right kind of soil. And the soil of the soil of tobacco, it's kind of like clayish soil. So you can okay. really only grow, grow tobacco and like corn or harder crops. You know, you can't really grow a lot of stuff uh, okay. aside from those. So okay. the, the, all the conditions, the humidity, the temperature, the soil in the country was found in La Union and in Isabella. That was like Here's, the most ideal. You know, there's a book I read about Harry Stonehill. Yeah. Harry Stonehill. He supposedly, I don't know how true this is. Maybe your dad would know or he maybe would you know. know. Yeah. No. He, he brought apparently tobacco in the north from the Valencia, whatever, from the States, right? Yeah. He was an ex-GI yeah. and, and he, he did, you know, all kinds of businesses in, in, the, in, in the Philippines. Yeah. And, and that book I read said that he was pioneer the tobacco in the north. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Right. I don't know his full history. Um, like yeah. you said, my dad knows knows more of the history of that than mm -hmm. I do. But he was very influential in in the industry. Um, right. In fact, he even if I if I'm not mistaken, he even at the end bought uh, a golf course or built a golf course in San Pedro Laguna, which really? is like behind our factory. That's his, where that's where you're growing the tobacco or the factory. The factory. Where, the okay. factory. Our, the farm. The farm is in uh, is, is in La Union. La Union, La Union. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's just pretty cool now because of the new highway. It takes like four hours to get there. To so get it's there. Cool. Yeah. And, and, and tobacco, is it like, you know, grapes is the wine, right? And, and, you know, you have a bad year. Does tobacco, is tobacco consistent with the leaves or do you get different varieties? Well, there are a lot of different varieties. There's a lot of different varieties of leaf to begin with. Just like grapes, you, know, you have multiple kinds of grapes. Uh, there's multiple kinds of tobacco leaves and tobacco variants, right? Um, mm. the, but the thing is, the trick is, uh, in each harvest, you try to keep it as consistent as possible. So uh, the thing is, when you, when, you, when you plant, you have to get the seed from the plant itself. You have to germinate it. You have to get, take the seed from that. And then we're lucky that we have a, we have a guy who's really... He's kind of like a scientist. He, like a scientist. Yeah, so he, he tries to bring it back to the original, to the original seed. So that See, it's that's open. very much like brewing, you know, oh, Gando, yeah? the word consistency, right? Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. the biggest, it's the biggest hurdle of any craft, you know, like what we do. I mean, you know, we get so many different kinds of hops every, every time it's harvested. Yeah. And it affects the taste, right? Yeah. So if somebody drinks the puta madre yeah. and expects this taste the first time he experienced it, he wants to taste that same taste all Absolutely. throughout, right? right. So now in your cigars, when you, when you make your cigar, and I have a go-to cigar from yeah. the tabaqueria, yeah. do, I get, do I get comments, what's with this one, man? Yeah. It's like... It's not the same. See, that's our challenge. That's our challenge. And that, that's one of the things that we're really proud of. Because, like, for example, like this cigar, Antonio Jimenez, right? He's my great-grandfather, actually. So we put him on. Dude, our... you got to get that. I love the, I love the stash, man. <laughs> I still can't tell who he looks like the most. By I way. think it's more like, I don't know, man. <laughs> but that's awesome, dude. So, so the cigar, like, okay, when we first put out the Antonio Jimenez Robusto in, man, like in the late 90s, yeah, it still tastes the same wow. today. Because like that's you said, awesome. no, because like you said, you have to be consistent because at the end of the day, your customer, if, if this is the cigar that he's going to go to, just like your beer or, yeah. your, or your gin, yeah. if he's going to go to that, and he, you better he make out. sure it's the same one. Well, you, you better owe, make sure. I it's think the same one. I think you owe it to your customer, correct, to keep it as consistent as possible. Because at the end of the day, it, this is a pretty pricey product. Right. It it's is. not. It's it not. Is. You know. And like for example, like this one, it'll take you thirty-five minutes to finish. So if it's gonna take mm -hmm. you thirty-five minutes, you're gonna sit there for thirty-five minutes and have a relationship with this. You probably smoke this longer than you can. Most men can. You know. <laughs> so, dude, so I gotta have a graphics right <laughs> on that, dude. That's it, man. 
I love it. No, no, but think about it. So you have a 35 minute relationship with that cigar and you want it to be beautiful from the beginning to the end, right? But compared to cigarettes, cigarettes is a fling. That's a real, cigar, cigar is a relationship. It's a relationship, (laughs) right? But of course, but of course, if you have a cigar like this, <laughs> then that's already something different. <laughs> okay, what's that called, cap? Okay. No, so this, <laughs> so this is this is called an emperador, right? And the reason I the reason I show this to you because there's a there's a bit of cigar history that I wanted to share with you, right? Um, you know, so back in the back in the day, um. The way that this this is actually a real cigar. It's full, a pure, made out of real tobacco, and you can actually smoke it. So back in the day, they used to hang this on the ceiling of the factory floor, and they used to pass it around to people so that they could smoke it. No way. Yeah. That's, so, dude, yeah. how the hell, man? Do you smoke that's, that? <laughs> that's, that's how it was, man, back then. Yeah. Of course, nowadays, this is just for decoration or you can chop off a little bit and smoke it differently you know, if you wanted mm. to. I'm actually, we're going to go through, I, I was able to put together some photos that I took off from your, from your site. And, and, yeah. and that way we can better appreciate what's yeah. going on, right? Mm-hmm. But um, what I want to do is let's, well, let's segue to a segment that sure. we call this or that. Okay. Right, so you know, we gotta know who you are, buddy. Okay. I mean, right. who's the guy who runs all the sales and marketing for? <laughs> okay, let's okay. do it. <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. I'm nervous, let's... but okay. I know, I know a little about you, so okay. You know, this is you gotta figure this one out. Let's 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 dig into your brain and all your right. passion, buddy. Okay, what do you pick? This or that? This. Really? Yeah. Have you climbed? What's but the... I, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Roman. Yeah. But you do less of this and you do more of that. That's a, a balance, actually. In fact, um, be, uh, I, was, I was scheduled to uh, fly to Nepal last April 9 to 24 to climb Mount Everest. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I was booked to climb. But uh, because of the coronavirus, I had the, the, all the, the whole trip got canceled. But one of the things that I'm very passionate about is mountain climbing and mountaineering and uh, camping. And, and <laughs> who got you into that? I mean, is that something you just said, but I want to climb a mountain, man, and, and uh, just find, figure it out from there? Or, or is it a friend that said, hey, Roman? No, I started off, I started off, <laughs> I started off in the late, late 90s uh, rock climbing. Uh, I got really heavy into rock climbing and then... A my buddies were uh, mountaineers, so they invited me to go up Mount Matulao, which was my first mountain. And since then, I just started climbing all over the country. And mm-hmm. like I climbed Mount Apo, Bulag several times. And uh, like the, the most challenging was supposed to be Everest base camp, but that got canceled. So you I'm gonna- You were really going for it. Huh? You were going yeah. all the way. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So is, I, this like, is it like a and, meditation and, and, to you? A what, sorry? It's like a meditation, meditation for you. It's it's a different energy, man. When you're up there in the mountain, mm. when you're, it's very spiritual. And uh, I, I love the beach. Don't get me wrong. Like you know, we see each other in the beach from time to time. But my real, my real, my real passion is up there in the mountains. I feel very alive, and, very free. Mm, yeah. And so it's, it's, it's sorry. It's it's not the executive trails. No, I. It's I, it's the real hardcore trails. Cause yeah, like I, um, yeah. So like when I go oh. when I went to Mount Pulag, uh, there's two there's two trails that that yep. get you there. Uh, one they call the Artista Trail, the celebrity yep. <laughs> trail. It's but it's but it's a beautiful trail. It's beautiful, okay. mm-hmm. right? It takes about four hours to, to mm-hmm. get up to the top. So we take we take the the harder trail, which is called the Akiki Trail, and okay. that's two days. Wow! Wow! Yeah. <laughs> so that's a two day trail. And 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 I remember. Back then, dude, you had a bit of weight on, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so this thing all just shed off because of mountain climbing. Basically, yeah. And I, yeah. I, got, I got really... Well, actually, um, of course, there was a period where I stopped 
work yeah. it out and like yeah. a lot of times you, you, you kind of forget to work out and stuff but then i got really heavy back into it about three years ago and okay. last year i went full on in fact this this year january i had stopped drinking alcohol mm-hmm. to prepare myself for for the everest climb uh okay but the minute coronavirus just, hit, i started drinking just... again. <laughs> <laughs> went out the fucking window man <laughs> So. Okay, here's the next one. All right. Boom! Bye. Which one, dude? Which one? I don't see it. We don't see oh, it. You don't see it. I, don't see it. <laughs> I was still going to ask, boss, I was going to ask yeah. you. Difficult difficulty. What, what have you climbed? Have you climbed? Have you got? Yeah. I climbed the stairs to the second floor. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what I, I that, do. that can actually be really challenging depending on how intoxicated you are. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh. Okay. Here we go. Wait, I can't hear. I can't see the. I can't see the that. I don't know. Okay, there you go. Can't see the that. Yeah, that now you sweet. can. There it's you. actually more this. <laughs> you see? You see both? Do you see both? Yeah, I see both. It's uh, this. You're definitely a this. Yeah. Oh, interesting really? choice. I thought. Yeah. There would be more of the influence from the sibling, but no, actually, <laughs> I remember when the, when my brother was in in Cali playing when you when you guys were playing in Cali. Eh? Oh shit! Oh I my was in god! Faces dancing on the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so the influence, the 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 rock and roll influence, but yeah. didn't really seep through. You like some music that's rock. But then you, yeah. you 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 enjoyed pop. Every, you enjoyed I, going everything, yeah. man. Like one of the one of the my, my, one of the one of the things I love listening to from time to time is actually classical music. I like really? I like listening to Vivaldi. You know, when I'm in the is car. It, is it because of your dad or, no, or no, grandfather? I just enjoy it. No, no, I just enjoy it. I I go through like now it, with Spotify. I just flip through and I depending on my mood. You so know. you really carved a different trail because Junus was with the same band. I mean, when everything yeah. started, yeah. all rock and roll, right? And, yeah. and, and you know, but then you, you were like, okay, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm liking something else. Yeah, exactly. But it doesn't mean that I don't like the same kind of music. I, I, I also grew up with Judas Priest and Iron Maiden. Yes. You know, yes. Led Zeppelin. All it, that. I, I mean, it, I know, it was I know. All there. But yeah. It, yeah. Wasn't, it wasn't like my go-to music. I wouldn't like sit down and. And, and listen to Pantera or whatever, no? Correct, correct, correct. Okay, next. Next. Pare. Oh, no. This. Really? So spirits are supposed to beer. Now that, okay, this well, is something. Well, well, actually, actually, here's the thing. Pare, I was going to tell you, dude, this doesn't make sense. Because okay. in all the times, you're the guy that yeah. carries this huge ass cooler <laughs> filled with beer. And okay. Pare, I, you showed me your backyard in Tali. Yeah. And it was a mound of empty <laughs> <laughs> No, okay, so here's the thing, right? Okay, because three years ago, I stopped drinking beer. Mm. I haven't drank oh. beer in three years because I was starting to, I wanted to get back into fitness. And one of the, my poisons, my main poisons, my, my pot belly, was due to the amount of beer I would drink. Dude, it, that, I, I mean, you know what, John yeah. Joe, you gotta chime in. Mm-hmm. Is that a fallacy or is that a fact? Maybe you should have <clears> another <throat> segment on that fallacy or fact. Oh, beer, beer what, is what, beer is definitely beer bellies. Is that a fallacy or a fact, dude? No, it's, I, it's, it's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. Um, most. Okay, of... wait, 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 wait. Time, <laughs> time. We're just talking about. We're just talking hey. about. We're just talking about the drink, huh? Yeah. But not the pollutant that goes with the drink. No, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Just the beer. Yeah, yeah that's just right. beer or, you know, it, does it if, give you if, hot bellies? Yes, it does. If you talk to anyone who's on keto or watching their weight, even with gin, they won't have uh, gin and tonic. tonic. They'll yeah. have gin and soda yeah. because the sugar. Uh, sugar content. Exactly. I don't know, man. It sounds like an Atkins diet and all well, that. Well, I mean, if you consider, <laughs> if you consider those times in Tali, man, I mean, we'd be, I'd be drinking. I would drink about a case of beer. Buddy, with the day. amount, the, the amount of beer you drank, yeah. you should look like I don't know, man. Your belly should have hit the floor by now. I mean, well, 
you I was, drank a lot. I did, yeah. And, but I know, also got some big. people who don't drink as much as you did the beer, yeah. and they didn't get, you know, and they, they have larger bellies. Yeah, well, so, I, I, I went up to 240. I, I, I feel I feel it's got to be with a diet as well. Well, it's a mix, man. I mean, yeah, look, you drink mix. you drink a case of beer a day. You eat all the pork and with that paella, chorizos, all, all that, all the barbecue, the smoke this, the smoke that, the lechon, and no exercise, nothing, zero. Oh, pa- yeah, yeah. I mean, of course. Well, you have a point there because yeah. I mean, so, uh, yeah. I read about you know that that swimmer that burns 10,000 calories a day. Mm. Yeah. That guy, I forgot the guy, the guy who smokes yeah. weed. Uh, Michael, Michael, Phelps. Michael Phelps. That's it. See, you yeah. guys know, you know your weed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, of course we do. So anyway, so I, read it, guy, I read it in the magazine, man. I, yeah, yeah. This guy fucking eats 10,000 calories, man. Yeah. You know what 10,000 calories? They showed a picture of a table mm. with all these burgers. 10,000 calories, but yeah. when you look at him, he's freaking... Yeah, because the, you know the amount of the amount of workout that you do, like man, when I go yeah. climbing, when I go hiking on a on a two day hike, like I went to Bukid Non and I climbed uh, Mount Kalatungan, which was a two day hike. I burned fifteen thousand calories in those two days. Mm. So, That's wild. That's so wild. the amount the amount you have to consume just to refuel yourself. So I can believe that, especially mm. if you're an Olympian like that guy, man. And I'm no I'm no Olympian, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do the next All right. one. Let's see. Uh, where, you can't see me. Something's wrong with my freaking setup. Yeah, leave it up. Yeah, leave okay. it up. But then you just yeah, leave yeah it I know. I, 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 that's why. I don't know why this freaking setup keeps messing oh, wait, around. We'll, anyway. we'll edit. We'll edit it. Okay. Yeah. And then you. Yeah, but when up. you know, but the thing is, when uh, you say you're gonna edit, back, when, back, when you back, when you back, say back, back. When, when you say you're gonna edit, <laughs> it's never edited. So what? Yeah. This or that? That. Hands down. That. Really? That. Okay. Star so Wars. You know, I don't know, but you know what? There's an impression I get that yeah. there's a real trek. You know, the trekkies they call them, right? Yeah. It's like a cult of yeah. sorts. You mean oh, like this? Look at John Joe. Look at John Joe. But like what, this? What? Like that, oh, like a cult, like that, <laughs> like that. What am I doing? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta ask you guys, because I mean, Star Wars, right? I mean, there's no, it doesn't, there's no cult following of sorts. I don't see it. I there is. No, it's very, there is a very big one. Not, okay. not, maybe not here. Maybe not here so much. But like, like I was having dinner. Oops. Wait. Okay. I was having <laughs> dinner with some, with so, with some friends, and uh, one of them was even describing, and I didn't even realize, that mm. the color of the lightsaber was uh, belonged Based on to the, a certain character. Like yeah. The, or the pers- green or, was Yoda's, or, the blue yeah. was... Yeah. yeah. And it's I, a per- personality type. You're assigned the color based on your personality. I also yeah. have a Star Wars tattoo. Don't worry. Ah, okay. <laughs> I, I'm both. I'm both. <laughs> so you're Balimbing, dude. Yeah. You're both. Uh, He's or. No, no, no. no. He's because, or. okay, okay. Let's... <laughs> I think I can explain it. I can because I, I I have a podcast with geeks and stuff like that. Um, Star Wars will always be our childhood. It will always remind us of our childhood. Yeah. Star Trek will remind us about our teen years and growing up and learning to understand other races, other people. Because Star Trek is more political. Star yeah, Wars right. is more fanfare. Hmm. Oh my God, yeah. man! He's, He's the both. man. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I, I, wanna, that's wanna, I'm, lear- I'm learning, man. I, this I, I is, think I just want to watch again. I, I, I got to watch actually, this shit again. Didn't Didn't Empire Strikes Back celebrate their 40th year? I just saw it on. Well, let's ask John Joe. He would know. <laughs> yeah, he would know. I'm <laughs> done <laughs> oh, Star Wars jockeys. But <laughs> I have also. I also have Star Wars Jockey. Yeah, I thought you were going to have props on the show. Oh, let you know me see, the light, let me see. The lightsaber. Oh, Yo. that's awesome. That's awesome, dude. That, that is cool, man. That is cool. Okay, that how much in Lasada? Put cool. <laughs> <laughs> everything now in Lasada, man. Well, dude, I mean, because of this, because of this pandemic, man, Lasada sales are going up. Put <laughs> like crazy. Oh, we next. Sell, we, next. We sell our, now you've got to answer carefully. I know this graduates from this to that, and it's your whole line. Okay, I guess this is uh, you know this is off your your yeah. site, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, 
Remember, choose wisely. If you were to pick one, what would it be? I would, I would go for this, really. I would like to go to bigger cigars more oh, than Oh, that's a good answer because it's like a phallic symbol. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, there's a re You know, here's the thing. But if you chose the opposite side, Saul will laugh, dude. You're going to hear her cracking up right now, dude. <laughs> Malaki para macho. I have a I have a question though. Yeah. Do you guys still produce the the ones on that? The one with the wooden filter? Do you well, still produce the, those? That's no, we don't produce it anymore. Ah, but uh, it's actually not a filter, it's just a wood tip. It's yeah. A, it's just a, so you, it doesn't I, get wet. So yeah, yeah, the tobacco I, doesn't get wet. I like yeah. that because when friends say, hey bro, pahit naman ng tobacco mo, and then they give it back, puro laway. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Say na lang, say na lang oh, that, that's why we you have know, in our I think I think we could learn that you know cigars is not something you share, you know, pal. It's a very personal you know I mean? thing, man. It's a very yeah. personal, but there's another personal thing but you share. It's share. a community, <laughs> right? Oh, off pop. Share. <laughs> okay, next. Next. Pal, choose wisely. That. Uh, <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> He'll disown me, man. Okay. No, but that, that. I actually do like their music more, to be honest. So here's your old man, dude. That's my dad. Yeah, he's my dad. So, okay. So what does he do besides being a Madridista like me? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he's the president of the Peña of Madrid in the Philippines, I think. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, right? yeah, I yeah, love yeah. it, pal. So for the people who don't understand, because you know we had uh, the the Pinchos guys uh, recently, yeah. and I did a this or that, and of course I showed the Real Madrid seal <laughs> and the and the Barca seal, and they went of course feasting to the Barca, right? Of course, of so course. So now I'm happy to know yeah. that the head yeah. of the Peña, your father, yeah. is a Real Madrid Madridista. <laughs> Merengue all the way. Exactly. And Tirso, Tirso is Tirso's, cringing. Yeah. Cringing. Right? But he got, Tirso got his revenge as well. He got his revenge. Oh, how, how did that happen? So we have another company. Um, and uh, we, we uh, it's for, it's an export company. And we, we needed to come up with, uh, with a name for the company. Like, like, like all companies, you have to come up with a name, right? Right. So when you submit it to the DTI, you have to put five names, right? Right. Number five he put Blaugrana. And that's the name it was chosen. So now the company is named Blaugrana. No <laughs> yeah. True story. True story. <laughs> oh, wow. But his son is still a Madrid fan, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Here's a son is a big Madrid fan. Exactly. Okay. That's going to yeah. be his, his, his curse forever and ever. Yeah. Dude. And actually, the funny thing is, they don't... But one of the things is like, I... I don't really, I don't follow Madrid. I don't follow Barcelona. I don't, I, I'm not a big Spanish football follower. I, I, I like following the English Premier League. That's really the, the league that That's I like yours. to follow. But the one team that they don't understand is I, I like to follow Everton. Oh, really? I remember him at Everton. Oh, yeah. Everton. 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 Yeah, that's the team that I follow. So wait, you know, the thing is, you know, one story I, I enjoy, Eken loves Everton too. So he's yeah. just telling oh, me right perfect, now. Buddy. There you go. I remember the first yeah. time I met uh, Roman. Peter Roman, he was wearing the Everton jersey. The, ah, the Everton jersey. That's, right. That's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. But dude, a re oh. there, he's showing it right now. Look at that. Beautiful <laughs> shirt. Huh? Ah, solid. He's wearing solid. A blue one. Yeah. Then you had another blue one. I have a blue I have two blue ones, actually. Yeah. There you go. So one really cool story with your dad is, you know, we would watch El Clasico in your, in your brother's house, right? Yeah. And yeah. your brother, Tirso, and your dad are neighbors. Exactly. Right? <laughs> and, and I love it because whenever Real Madrid wins, he starts yeah. blowing his trumpet. He a, <laughs> no, that, he, that's, a, that's a bugle, a right? A bugle. Dude, he used to, when we were kids, he used to come into our bedrooms at, on Saturday morning at seven o'clock in the morning, after we came back, <laughs> that would blow your mind. But he, that really, you know. But the thing is, whenever Madrid lost, 
Puta yeah. silencio. <laughs> Ay, uh, wala. Quiet siya. Quiet, boy. <laughs> That's too funny. So here you guys are, the three bros. There they are. There we are. And and, and what do you call that? And and, and um, Junos is is, is is in Australia, right? He's in Sydney. He's in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. So he's been and, there and, for twenty odd years. Yeah. Yeah. So he doesn't plan to come back and join the team, or not at the he's... moment. Not okay. at the moment. There's no plans. Uh, right. Nothing really set in stone. Uh, of course, yeah. if he so so decides to come, absolutely. You know. Of course, he has. But a that, you know, but it's really cool that you're all. You know, I mean, pretty much involved, right? I mean, yeah. of course, mainly Tirso and yourself, exactly, and, and and your dad. So succession will always be there. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think you know, cigars is not definitely not going anywhere. Right? Well, you know, so this is this has been my only job. I've never had another job. Wow! Imagine that. Yeah. So from the very beginning, it's always been tobacco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always been tobacco. So, tobacco. so here we're looking at a farmer. And then what do you do? You no, dry actually, it? Actually, what that's that? not that's that's not a farmer. So what? So this 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 photo here is um, our classification department, right? So this Whoa. is where this is where we receive the tobacco bales from the farm, okay. and the guy is opening him opening them up, and then he's sorting them out, and he's gonna start moist. He's gonna put some moisture to it. He's gonna spray it with some water and some, okay, you know, and then and then he's gonna wrap it around. So if you see on the other photo, you have like a jute sack wrapped around the tobacco mm. leaves. Yeah, because you're gonna okay. bring moisture back into the leaves so that later on when you strip the leaf, because the middle, so you have the full leaf, and then yeah. the middle is the vein. Right. You you throw that out. Ah, uh, so you just get half the, the left. Leaf. The left and the, the right. left or the right, like the lungs, yeah, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. all you get, and then that's what you use for the filler, the binder, and the wrapper of the cigar. Wow! And then oh, you so have to here, pass here. High. So that's okay. Basically, that's what's what they're doing here is about so, to roll. Yeah. So yeah. here, so here, what they're doing is they're they're wrapping, they're wrapping the cigar, right? Okay. So the the lady is holding what we call a bunch. So that bunch was made the day before. Right. Okay. Yeah. So then I was made the day before, and now she's applying the wrapper to it. So that so the, the grading. Everything is handmade. There's no machine at none, all. None, none, none. All when, handmade. When someone goes to your, you know, factory, it this is what you're seeing. People are yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and 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 the thing is, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, the pressure or the amount of I don't know the density of the cigar matters. Because the burn yeah. rate will change, yeah. correct? So if you have too little, too little leaves, or we call it palaman, if you have too too little, too little yeah. quantity inside, it's gonna burn really hot, and it's just gonna taste like you know, just awful. If it's too much, then it's plugged. Then it, you can't. So you smoke can't draw. It. You can't draw it. So you wow. really have to have the perfect balance. And mind you, some of these ladies have been there since I've been in diapers. So, so they, they know the feel. They know the feel, it's, dude. It's all by feel, man. And it's an art form. So if they're having a bad day, well, you're going to have it a bad show. product. Yeah, oh, I'm, wow. sure, I'm sure in your, in your industry, yeah, in, in yeah. the liquor, I mean, you get, I mean, you're not feeling 100% that day. Well, chances are it's not going to be 100%. You know, right, so right. it's the same thing. So... That's why every step of the way in the factory, from the classification department to the to the cigar making department, quality control. I mean, all of these steps. You know, um, we have to watch every step of the way to make sure that the quality is always maintained because it it passes through several hands. Right. So that until it goes to your hand, you're always okay. going to be happy and satisfied. And so, what's this thing that looks like? I don't know, wooden plank. Press. What is it that? looks like a press. A, yeah, a drying, okay. so, a drying press. <clears throat> no. So the one on the left. Okay, these are the cigar molds. So what happens is when you're making the bunch. So you basically get a whole bunch of leaves, like seven or eight different kind, different leaves, and yeah. then you roll it around another leaf, and then you put it in the molde. It's a mold. Okay. To, to shape it. Okay. You know? That's basically what it is. And, then, and all of this is, is all Spanish. It goes down in history. These same tools have been so, used. Yeah. So, so this, these molds, these molds are 
if I'm, if I'm correct, these molds are roughly in the 80, 90 year old wow. range. That's awesome. We actually That's have, good. we actually have some molds that are turn of the century. Cause remember That's awesome. the Philippines used to have a lot of cigar factories. Okay. We used to have a lot. Okay. So they all shut down. It's so, like coffee. Co we were exporting yeah. coffee and then yeah. dead. Dead. Right? So then what happens is when we started our business, obviously we needed materials. Right. These materials were still in the old buildings of those facilities. So, so we you, went you and we bought it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And then. Uh, so it's basically you're working with antique, antique furniture or whatever. Was, yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Antiques are 50 years old. These are, we, and we're still Over. using them until today. So your story like um, Monica, Monica Villiger, the, uh, the, the daughter of Heinrich Villiger, the biggest the, the, the cigar factory in Switzerland, right? One of the biggest in the world. She came to visit us in the factory. And, you know, we're giving a tour and walking around the facility. And she spots one of our cigar molds and a, it was inside a cigar press. And she goes, oh, wow, we have some of this as well. It's in our museum. Wow. Yeah. So... For them, these are all museum it's pieces. Putang ina tayo, ginagamit pa rin. Ginagamit pa rin. Sige, pwede pa yan. Okay, you gotta, you know, in every company, and especially, you know, really romantic companies, and I would say Tabakiria is one of them, yeah. uses a seal. Okay. And I think, the, you know, it says a lot about your company and, and the product. Yeah. So, run me down this is Scudo. You've got a crown, yeah. you've got a, a, a cock, uh -huh. okay? And a you've rooster? got the, the, the root, okay, <laughs> the rooster. Yep. <laughs> and then you've got the, the tobacco leaves. What, okay. what, why, why so, is that? So here's the thing, when my dad, when my dad, um, when my dad uh, hired an artist, uh, he wanted to put the family crest. And the family of Ripoll, the Scudo is a rooster, a blue rooster. Okay. I didn't even know that, really. And the story behind that is because, now I don't know if this is true, right? And mm -hmm. you, you kind of know. But it turns out that back in those days, the repulse were on top of the, the podium or on top of the banner. Oh, what do you call those towers? The towers, no? Yeah. Okay. And they were spotting the enemy. And they would be the one with the loudest voice and shouting, Enemy is here! The enemy is here! Now, I don't know if it's true that we have loud voices. I don't know. No, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know about it. Puta <laughs> <enough. Right? laughs> but, but why blue? A blue rooster. I don't know. Blue. I don't know. Uh, I don't that, know. It's but, just, that's, but that's pretty cool, though. I mean, so that's, right? that, was, that was the family crest, right? The okay. And, and then, then you, under, you put the tobacco. It's the three tobacco leaves, the three sons of my, of my father. Ah. Yeah. Because so if you, you know, if if you just extended the lower leaves a little bit more, yeah, that's a tacosa. Suddenly you're gonna be well. In, you know who's the middle child in the Kush land. Right? Yeah. You you know who's the middle child, Diva. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What the wow, man? No, that's, that's, that's awesome. That. Yeah, man. I mean, this is, you know, there's so much to learn about lot, what you do. I mean, it's just, but it's great that you're, you know, bring it out there because a lot of people, they just look at cigar, eh, it's all the same cigar. No, it's not. No, right? it's, it's not. not. If you be given a chance, and I think that's why it's good that we have this, yeah. because what we want to do is precisely talk about things you don't really talk about. Well, you, you know, know, there's another thing that we also have to remember, like, uh, in this day and age, and even back in the earlier years, cigars were perfect pairing for a lot of liquor products. Let's right? talk about that. There was a lot. I, well, I, what I know, obviously, we go. have our Eau de Vie, of, right? So of we, we've made our first um, mango brandy, yeah. which is a, a clear brandy. And, yeah. and brandy and cigars. Why? How did that happen? Okay, I, I wouldn't even begin to understand the, the, the backstory, but it just tastes fucking good. Yeah, together. It yeah, just, it really, it just, you know, it's, a, it's a match. It's a match. It's like, okay, man, look, when, when you're cooking, you, you love to cook, Mare. Okay, you, you, yeah. I mean, Mare's a fantastic cook. He's a really good <laughs> I try. No, I mean. <laughs> Janjo, Janjo cooks a lot, man. He's got a lot <laughs> of love. And, and so do you. And so I do, do love you, cooking Roman. as well. I so yes. do love. 
But yes. here's the thing. When you make a dish, doesn't matter what dish it is, right? Let's say you're inventing something. You're not following really a recipe. How do you know that this thing tastes good with this? You just yeah. do. You just have to try it. Yeah. And really, the way I see it with cigars and whiskey or brandies or cognacs, or it's just a perfect mix. In fact, some beers taste really good with cigars as well. It depends on how you blend it together. Right. You know, how, right. You, how you match it. Is, I got to ask you this. Is there one movie that exemplifies cigar smoking? That, that you know, like you're a fan of this movie because, oh, the, dude, the way the cigars are smoked or presented, Hollywood or whatever, I mean, do you know of any movie wherein it really strikes a chord to you? And, and you know, after watching that, you feel like lighting up a cigar? <laughs> Not really a movie, but I can say every time that Arnold Schwarzenegger lit up a cigar, man, yeah. it's badass. Yeah. Man, every it's single huge. Time. His cigars and are freaking big, man. He's Mr. Mr. O- Mr. Olympia, Perry. He's macho. Yeah, it's macho I mean, to be smoking cigars. Yeah. 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 So, Perry, if, 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 if he looks really macho smoking that, what do you think we're going to look like? Oh, Dude, that, that, that cigar <laughs> that he, the, the cigar he smokes is probably a 50 minute. <laughs> You know what? It's, it's possible. It is. It's, uh, th- those would probably be the double Coronas. The double Coronas are seven inch long, seven inch long cigars, and with a fifty two gauge. So that's it's, a ring gauge is a different uh, diameter of the of the. Mm-hmm. Of the I have to ask: when you can't finish a cigar, yeah. and you, I mean, you can let it die and spark yeah. it up again. Right? And you're supposed to let it die naturally. You're not supposed to. You're kill not it so- a cigarette. Yeah. 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 Okay. Here's my question. Yeah. When you relight it. Does the taste change? Yeah, yeah. It it'll it it. Okay, look, man. You're, you you <clears throat> you have this cigar. You're gonna set the flame to it. The first time you're gonna light it. it is that first, the best? Is that the best time when no. you first light the, it? The, for me, for, yeah. here's here's the other thing. There's no, I I. There's a there's a kind of a. There's a way to say that, okay, this is the correct way of smoking. This is the correct way. This is, the, this is how you should do it. But the reality is, it's how it makes you feel. Okay, I like how does, that. How does the cigar make you feel? And how, how, do you like, how do you like to smoke your cigar? For example, man, mm. there are people who like to smoke it with a match. Some people like to yeah. burn the cedar wood and then they burn. Some people like Zippo lighter. Some people like the regular, you know, disposable lighter, torch light. I mean, there's really no correct and wrong way. I, I guess, mean, in, you know what, John Joe, in every craft, I'm starting to see it, right? There's mm. snobbery in every craft. Of course. There, you know what I mean? There's this. Yes, there well, it's so, like, it's like, that, like in craft beer, right? Dude, yeah. there's some guys who invest ridiculous amounts in this kind of glassware and all this shit. Yeah. Right? Oh, it's got to be this and that and this and that. Okay, yes, there is some science behind it. But, but sometimes they're taking it a little bit too far. Yeah, it's you a little bit. I mean? Yeah. But the thing is, like, I, I agree. <clears throat> I agree like a humidor. I mean, yeah. you got to have a humidor. Oh, right? no, you have a to. A cigar. Yes. When you buy a cigar, you yes, need you a humidor. To. Yes. Because you got to get it. What, what's the humidity that it's got to be? 72%. 72% is the ideal humidity. If you go less, it'll dry out. If you go exactly. more, it's, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it'll never, it won't get into moss you know, nice or anything thing, else. Nice, no, no. If you put too much water, too much moisture, it'll mold. Okay. Mm. I mean, yeah. But if it's less, it, it, it'll just dry out, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, Pare. Guy, Come man. on. Look at that. <laughs> Pare. <laughs> no, but what, what you were saying earlier, boss, is that uh, cigarettes are like a fling. And cigars are an, an investment in time. Yeah. Like you, you'll see a million and one people uh, try to impress friends or chicks. They'll get a cigar and then only, they'll only smoke it till here. Yeah. In lang, eh, they, they, they won't be able to commit to the whole you know, thing. <clears throat> for that, then you'll need the smaller ones. Mm. So that's why, we have, that's why we made many sizes. Because cigar sizes also correlate to the time you have to smoke, mm. the size of your mouth. The shape of your shape of your lips. What's more comfortable when you when it sits in your mouth? You know, I mean, some people are bigger than others. So if you look at if you look at the on the screen that you po- you posted earlier with yeah. the lineup, the lineup of all our cigars, you have right. different sizes, different lengths because it's what is comfortable for you. It's like but I, is it the same tobacco leaf? 
That's my question. Or no? The blend, it, if it's the brand, like this one here, Florida Filipinas, yeah. that, those are the same. This Antonio Jimenez, they're all the same, but they're different. Both of them are different. Ah, ah what there. do you have there? John just got all it. Right. Of course I have it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's see, that's the romance. That's the romance that I like to look at when I when I when I see cigars and I and I you know and I try to talk to people and it's like it it's really there it is. it's really what is your favorite? What is what's, gonna... the, what's the sunug one there with the pyramid type tip? What's that? Okay, that is called a Maduro. Maduro. So what happens there is we naturally uh, we, we make this leaf. This is a man. This is a made leaf. We manipulate the leaf. Okay. okay. What so do you mean? Manip- make it? You it's, genetically yeah. grow it? No, 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 no. Oh. So there, there's a kind of a secret process to it. I can't really say exactly. Okay. No, no, you don't have to. But is it? I mean, you're not making no. the plant. You're, no, you're, no, no, no. You're blend. It's like you're blending. Kind of like a blending. Okay. Kind of right. Okay. And then what we're basically doing is we're letting the natural sugars come out. Of wow. that leaf, it's like right? your car. It's in, in cooking caramel, caramelization. Caramel, parang ganon. <laughs> parang ganon. Caramelization. 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 We all cook, yeah. but we can't say caramel. We can't, uh, forget the, you know, you, you know, you you leave the onions and yeah. brown, and then right? you smell it like that. Yeah. <laughs> so. So that one, so that mm-hmm. one, when you smoke it, it actually is smoother, creamier, uh, more suave in a lot of ways. Um, okay, wait, I gotta ask you this question yeah. because Pare, there's a friend of ours. Yeah. And when I saw him smoke that cigar, I said, wait a minute, isn't that the wrong way of smoking it? When you smoke a cigar, yeah, you don't inhale it, right? You shouldn't. Yeah. Normally, normally, normally no, because the smoke is very thick. It's very strong, uh, but I know people who do. I know. <laughs> the, the first time I saw it was Miguel Artigas. Oh, well, yeah. Like, who they smoked it and he, he, he inhaled it. I'm like, dude, yeah. what are you doing? Typically, <laughs> typically, c- cigarette, cigarette smokers. This? Okay, when it comes to inhaling cigars, there's no specific yeah. rule. Yeah. I like that. You, okay, you can. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I personally wouldn't recommend it. Mm. Okay. You know, it's, I wouldn't. It's it's magaspang actually. It's very very strong. Yeah. But the, dude, I can imagine if a cigarette, you know, is this small, right? Yeah. I mean, this thick, a cigar. It's a lot of smoke. That's crazy. That's a no, lot. No, but of smoke. the thing is, like, what I find is, like, most cigarette smokers have a harder time puffing cigars if they're not used to it. Like, if they're gonna try it for the first time, mm-hmm. they'll tend to inhale. Yeah. So yeah. for for that purpose, we've created a line of flavored cigars. So wow. we have a rum flavor, cherry, vanilla, that chocolate, is honey. Cool. That no, is because cool. no, because the thing is, we had to make it milder, and we okay. have to. And this is actually also at one point intended for the for the women, because women. Love you know what, stuff. John Joel, hear that, right? It's yeah. like us coming up with our pale ale or session beer. Yeah. Mm. You know, it opens up the market, right? I mean, yeah. you've got we've got our IPAs or yeah. hoppy <clears throat> beers, and you've got your Maduros and really. You know the hard type of cigars, yeah, hardcore you, smokers, yeah. So yeah, and, it, it, and you've got the yeah. It takes Makes away sense. the the intimidating factor because it can be intimidating. You know we've been selling we've been selling in the past uh, past year you know on mm. Lazada, on Lazada, yeah. and nowadays with with everything shut down, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's one of the very few places that our products are actually available for for purchase. Actually, mm. we're gonna put everything in the description where we yeah. can find all these cigars, right? I'll forward you. I'll website. forward you yeah. the link. We need to put all link. of that out there, yeah. Yeah, it thanks. Makes, you know, just so that we, you know, people can find you. Yeah. Because I know it's difficult in your, because you can't advertise, right? No, yeah. I mean, you're, you're not allowed. allowed. That's no. one thing I wanted to tap into is that <clears throat> yeah. there's zero advertising for tobacco. And so. Dude, one of the things, that's really the, wild, dude. You're talking about swimming upstream. Yeah. You can't advertise. Yeah. You gotta put shit pictures in yep. your packaging. Yep. Then your excise tax. Yep. Dude, how can a company with all of that survive all these years? And my and let me add to that, you also have specific locations where you can sell. You can't really just sell it everywhere because mm-hmm. you I mean you, you can only put it where people can afford to pay for it. Yeah. Right. right. I mean that's another point. So 
for us, our our big our big thing is we export a lot. So that's that's our, awesome. That's our yeah. main that's our main main side. When when did you start exporting uh, from the very uh, your cigars? From the very ah, beginning. from the start. Okay, from the start, there from you the go. start in '93. Yeah, we started. Yeah. 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 That's awesome, man. And then That's locally, awesome. uh, if I'm not mistaken, because I spoke to Tirso when we launched uh, the brandy. Yeah. Uh, he brought up that you guys are in, um, I guess it's parang balik bayan places like uh, Cultura. Yes, where you guys we're, are very strong in. That's good. That's it's actually good. one of our one of our chief chief markets uh, because the Philippines in history has always been a cigar a tobacco producer. Mm-hmm. He at yeah. one point carried the I, I can't remember exactly but it was a very big amount to the philippine government back in the early 1900s or the turn of the wow. century right it was okay. like two percent or three percent of the gdp i think or something like that it was pretty big so until and from that point until today leaf tobacco has always been a big thing for the philippines in fact the tobacco of the philippines is used everywhere in the world right oh i didn't know that okay yeah okay a lot of a lot of the tobacco is used right for a lot of cigars that that are made. Right. Um, unfortunately, the Philippines is not a big cigar smoking country. Country, yeah. It's there not a very big go. one. So it's a very specific niche market. And that's the reason why you always fly to Vegas and do all these conferences. It's exactly. Your market out there. Exactly. That's good. I mean, fact, you're making the yeah. Philippines proud, dude. It's made in the Philippines. You know, it's our second, our, our biggest market is America and our second biggest is in Spain. Our Spanish awesome. market is booming, and we're carrying the Florida Filipinas line in in Spain. So, I gotta ask you, Roman. Yeah. You know we have alcohol competitions and stuff, right? Yeah. So, I mean, do you have like you know we have the you you know we have the the what do you call the San Francisco spirits competition, which is a global thing, and everybody yeah. th- brings in their spirits, different categories. Yeah. Do you have something similar for cigars? Where you know people get awards, their medals, and, and, and recognition. There's there's a there's a like this magazine that I was mentioning, uh, the Cigar Aficionado. They yeah. they established a rating system for certain cigars. So what mm-hmm. they would do is they would sample cigars from different countries, and they would smoke it, and then they would determine, oh, this is the rating of this, this is the rating of that. It's it's not really a like a competition I mean, not it's really not a, comp- a comp- yeah. not a competition it's really <clears throat> you know it's their take on what level what, yeah you're you're but, you're at okay. exactly so there's Makes really sense. the only competition i know there is I, I read it i read it somewhere where they have a pipe smoking competition <laughs> yeah pipe. <laughs> pipe, pipe, to, pipe tobacco pipe tobacco so they they put they put uh, I forget I think it's one gram of pipe tobacco inside the pipe and they smoke it the longest and whoever is the longest wins. In fact, I was in Japan. Yeah, I sm- I was in Japan uh, last December visiting my clients and I met the champion in Japan for year two thousand seven or something like that. So. <laughs> Who knows that they had that competition? It's, okay, well, dude, Roman, our yeah. time is is almost what, up. But before, I, I, before, wait, what? I, what? I, I have, I have, I actually have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Go. Okay. Uh, I have two of these left from you guys. Okay, which should you. Which should I keep? Should I keep this one? This is the uh, 1898, mm-hmm. or the one with your great grandfather? You should smoke them both. <laughs> Which should, which should I keep longer? <laughs> which which one should I keep longer? You I'm should, curious. You should smoke them both, and I'm, I'm definitely gonna box. smoke them both. And well, I'll send you another box. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm, no, um, no, no, okay, okay. So, so 1898, 1898 is a is a very mild mild smoke, very smooth, very easy, very creamy. So, if you're a mm-hmm. beginner smoker, you're not a you're not a regular smoker. I would so that's go for your the session. That's your session. That's your session ale. Yeah. Right there. So the if you're one, if, if you're a regular smoker. Then you'd go for the Antonio Jimenez because this has a stronger body. It's, it's a bit mm-hmm. more of a, a punch to it, you know. Perfect. So that's what that's how you would do it. So depending on what you want to experience at the mm-hmm. moment, another way of looking at it, the 1898 could be a morning cigar after breakfast because it's easing. You're easing into your day, and then the mm-hmm. Antonio Jimenez could finish off your day because you're having a nice happy you're hour. Done. Yeah. No, ah, so that, that's another way of, of looking at it because you don't want to when you wake up you want slow easy steady and when you finish you want to sometimes finish hard so that that's how it 
you know. So it's okay. basically Barry White to Metallica, okay? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, uh, another question that uh, a lot of people ask is that yes. I actually regret not buying the cutter. Yeah. What's the, okay, because there's a lot of, um, you know where school. they use that also, Janjo, you know, trivia, you know where they use that also, right? For fingers, yeah. For no, not for, no. <laughs> Every summer. In the barn, guys. <laughs> 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 no, okay, because people say, people say use a ballpoint pen. And some people cut it. If you're like, like me, let's, uh, an yeah. average user, what would you suggest? There's really no correct answer to that because pretty much all you got to do is put a hole. You have mm. to put a hole so that you can, you can draw. Let, you can draw. Yeah. Not cut it with a, a knife. But please don't no. use a ballpoint pen. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't put ink on it because you're going to smoke the ink. Use a toothpick. <laughs> use a toothpick yeah. or the back of a match. So you could punch a hole with the back of the match. Or if you, you could get a Swiss knife and you could cut, a, cut, the, cut the end off if you mm -hmm. don't have a cutter. Some people like to bite it off. Um, yeah, you know, but if you weird. do that, it's messy. It's messy. Yeah, so. it's, it, it breaks the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, don't so, do that. so much I, shit in your I, mouth when I you drink. Think, I think the easiest, the easiest is to punch a hole with the back of a match or a toothpick a couple of times. Cleaner, easier. Uh, and plus it's readily available in all restaurants or bars anyway. So, yeah. Okay, one last request for Roman. Yes. Hi, Roman. Yes, sir. Roman. Okay. So basically, this is a request from Saul. Yeah. <laughs> you have to abide. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, Roman is, you know, you might think he's not talented like his, you know, brother Pearsall, right? Okay. But this guy, oh, no. this guy can sing, man. Oh, no. <laughs> he can sing. But not only can he sing, he has a memory of an elephant, pilot. Okay, oh, you, know what I'm, you know what I'm asking for, right? <laughs> SM, come on, dude. This is, by the way, this is not an advert. We're not being paid for this, but we gotta hear this because all the titos and titos out there would love to hear someone remind them of how things were before COVID. Oh Way my. before COVID. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come Take on, then. Look at what you've got. There's so much more. We got a lot. Here at SM, we've got it all. We've got it all. We've got it all. <laughs> we've got it all. Here at SM. Here at SM. Here at SM. We've got it all for you. <laughs> Roman. You rock, dude. Thank you, man. Not, li not like your brother, pal, all because of a damn contract. He doesn't have the huevos to come here, man. Huevos <laughs> rancheros, wala. Hey, thanks so much, Roman, hey, thank for you, joining man. us, pal. You know, with, you know, there's so much more to talk about. We didn't even talk about, you know, how it's things are in more, COVID. Yeah. But anyway, this is, this is a lot of fun. We've learned yeah. so much about cigars. I've learned a lot. I never know a lot of these things. And, and I'm sure a lot of the viewers would have learned so much more yeah. about cigars and maybe learning how to appreciate it. And they, sh you know, we're going to put all the website, all your yeah. links and how to reach you guys and how to, to try out your products. Right. Well, thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate the time and they had a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> let's do it again. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I have questions. I have a lot of questions. I have questions about FVR. Well, uh, no. Dude, it's, uh, we'll do it on the part two. Part two. <laughs> part two. <laughs> Roman, thank hey, you so much, buddy. Thank and you. And I'll see you Appreciate soon. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.